promises, promises, promises. Do you tend to trust them or have you become a bit skeptical? According to the story, a politician visits this very rural town and meets with the leaders and he says, what are your two biggest needs in this town? They said, we really need medical care. There's not a doctor anywhere nearby. We need help with that. So the politician pulls out his phone, steps away, and speaks animatedly into his phone. He comes back a little bit later and goes, within two weeks, I promise there will be a doctor here full time. And he asks, what's your second problem? And they said, there is nowhere in this town where we can get cell phone coverage. <laughs> we all have reasons to be skeptical of promises you know, because of politicians and pundits who make promises they don't deliver on, teachers and preachers who promise things about God that aren't true, spouses and special friends who promise to always be there until they aren't, parents and people who said, everything will be okay, and it wasn't. All the broken promises, they leave us frustrated, they leave us skeptical, they lessen trust. Even with all of that, I'm right now going to make two promises to you. Promise one is for anyone facing any kind of an uncertain outcome. Promise two is for anyone living with any kind of heartache or letting go. Number one, if you are facing some unknown future, some uncertain outcome, you know, a surgery, a job interview, a visit to the oncologist, what, what you will not ever hear me say is the last one I just mentioned there. Everything will be okay. Actually, no one ever hears me say that. I mean, maybe that's something we could say to young kids, but not really ever beyond that. I will not promise everything will be okay because I know better. I've been around way too long and seen way too much. When it comes to what lies unknown before you, what I do promise, not everything will be okay, but you will. You will be okay. Ultimately, you will have in here what you need to be okay. You're not so much in each moment, but you will. And why do I promise that? I promise that because of him, because of Jesus. Jesus promises that. And that is the promise that Jesus himself clung to. It was hard for him. And there were times that he just clung to the promise that he would be okay. And it is what he has promised us. I trust that promise because I trust him. And that's promise one. When we face some unknown future, not that everything will be okay, but that we will. Promise number two. This is for anyone who knows some kind of heartache or some kind of emptiness, some kind of letting go. Premise number two is this, whatever the suffering, whatever the challenge, whatever the anguish, there is a blessing right there in the midst of that. There is always a blessing hidden somewhere in the tough times. There is. And why do I promise that? I promise that because of him. That 
is his promise. Each of the Beatitudes today is a promise. A promise that letting go holds life. These are stunning promises for those in the lowly place. To those who hurt. To those who know the pain of letting go. And if that's you, Jesus says, blessed are you. Blessed are you in the midst of it. Even now yours is the kingdom of heaven. And all of our letting goes this promise. There is a blessing tucked away somewhere in there. You know, usually or maybe at least often, we only know those blessings when the tough times strip us of our normal patterns and thinking. But it's there for us, for those we love. Many years ago, the Jewish leaders asked their rabbi, why does it say in Deuteronomy that the word of God is on our hearts? Why does it not say the word of God is in our hearts? And the rabbi said, the word of God is on our hearts so that when our hearts are broken, our hearts are broken open, and the word of God can drop in and blossom. More recently, there was a, a young girl who had a beautiful singing voice. And after the, the big competition, her mom asked one of the judges, what, what do you think? Does she have the, the kind of voice that she should maybe think about going pro? The judge thought about it for a while. And finally he said, she sings beautifully when her heart is broken, she will sing sublimely. There is a gift in the letting go, a gift that's only found in the tough times. So there are the two blessings. One in the end, whatever life throws at you or me, you'll have what you need to be okay and here you will. And to somehow, in the midst of whatever the suffering, there is a blessing there. You know, sometimes it feels like all that we can do is cling to that promise. You know, they, these promises don't take our pain away. They usually at least don't feel us with this warm feeling or inner glow. Oh, sometimes we do taste the blessing right in the middle of it. We do. But often, though, the, the promise is just what we hang on to even when we don't think we can go on. And I said that the reason I make both of these promises is because of Jesus. It is. Because I trust him. I do. But I also speak from my own experience a bit. You know, there are some blessings to being as old as I am, although I don't particularly enjoy how beat up my body is from all the old sports injuries from when I, my younger years. But I'm glad for the wisdom and perspective that I've gained and the fact that I know these promises are trustworthy. Thursday night at our women's club gathering called Ask the Priest Night, someone asked about suffering, any, any of my own sufferings. So I told them about the suffering that I faced that left me wondering if I would ever be okay again. I was associate pastor at a parish when one pastor just walked out one day in the middle of whatever, and then a new one came. And for reasons I will never understand, this, this priest needed people to hate me. And he just lied about me all the time, all the time. It was awful, awful. One one day, eventually, for other bad behavior, he was sent to jail. And I was at least relieved that for a while he couldn't hurt me or anyone else. But me, I felt like something in me had died. And I seriously did not know if I would ever care again as much as I cared. Which was my real joy to care like I cared. 
And those were tough days that lasted for months. What I'll tell you now is that I am okay. Know that I am more than okay. I am a better me than I ever would have been had I not suffered what I suffered. Not that God sent the suffering or that it was good, any of that stuff. But now, through that, I don't only care as much as I used to, I care more than I ever did. Again, it was God, as Jesus promised, bringing a new good from the suffering that I faced. The promise of Christ is that when we cling to him and what he stood for, there is always a blessing to be found in the midst of our suffering. And in the end, we will be okay. I promise.